Hi, welcome back. You know, I'm sure by now there are many of you that are sick of throwing cylinders, and I don't blame you. Although they may seem like a simple shape, the repetition and the knowledge that we gain through these cylinders is so necessary and build skills uh, that we're going to use farther into the process. Um, as part of my introduction to the wheel series, this episode in particular will focus on learning to use pottery ribs in the creation of bowls. Although the techniques um, I will show you and demonstrate are connected to the creation of a bowl form, many of the same skills that we will be using will be used in shaping cylinders and beyond into plates, spaces, and even more complex forms. Uh, the complementary video to this program will discuss trimming and turning. In order to get the most important information out to you as quick as I can, I will do my best to focus on the objective at hand, which is to throw a ball using a rib. So, I won't be focusing as much on the basics of throwing, centering, as I've discussed in earlier videos. So, if you have some confusion, go back, watch those videos, and be prepared to ask a few questions. I will be focused on pretty much just discussing the bowl and another big thing for you to compare is what are the differences between the two? Those are some things to really start thinking about as we get farther into this process. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So to get started, let's quick talk about our tools. Um, I have my pottery wheel, my bat. For this, I'm going to use a little bit more clay so you can get a better of idea of what the bowl looks like as I throw it. Uh, so I have two pounds of clay, and then I have a handful of ribs. Now ribs are used for shaping, and the ribs that I have in my hand are good examples of, uh, first is a wood rib. Uh, this is pretty much a standard rib that comes with your kind of introductory toolkit. Uh, the same toolkit will include one of these nice steel ribs. They're very, very nice, have a nice sharp edge, and I'm going to use that today. And something new to the market within the last few years are these mud tools. These are produced by Michael Sherrill, a uh, wonderful sculptor. These mud tools are in different densities. So we have the red one, which is the softest, the yellow one, which is kind of the second, a little bit more rigid, um, a green one, and the most rigid is the blue one. So these are the tools that I'm going to use. I would say that these tools will be my exclusive ones that I'm going to use today. Um, I have my wire tool, and I have my bucket and my sponge and probably a needle tool to check that thickness. But again, I'm only gonna go over the very specific things to the bowl, not about the whole throwing process today. So if you need written instructions, I have those under my uh, website on my interactive notebook under throwing the bowl. Uh, I'm a firm believer in coming to the wheel with a plan. So if I'm gonna throw a cylinder, I'm gonna approach it the way I need, specifically do a cylinder, not um, as I would throw a bowl. That happy accident is always fun, but you want to be able to replicate it. So I'm going to throw a bowl from start to finish so you get a better idea of the whole process. So let's go ahead and get started. My centering is pretty much the same, although for a bowl it's going to be a little bit wider than it is taller. So I'm going to make sure that I set up my base a little bit wider than I normally would. For a cylinder, I'm looking for height. For a bowl, I'm really looking for width. A little bit more. One thing to keep in mind is I've created a, a profile progression of sorts. So I took a snapshot if I cut these in half along the way so you get a better idea of what they look like. And I have that on my website and I've also kind of snuck it right in here so you get an idea of what it looks like. Here's an illustration of about eight points of interest along the process of throwing a bowl. Each of these steps will be explained in greater detail as we work through the process, but I wanted you to see them beforehand to have a greater understanding of how a cylinder becomes a bowl. So once my clay is centered, I'm going to go ahead and open it up the same way I would a bowl, or a cylinder, excuse me. But I'm not going to go all the way down. So I have my needle tool in my hand, and what I'm looking for is, with the cylinders, about a quarter of an inch. With the bowl, I'm looking for about twice that measurement. So about half an inch, because I'm going to remove a little bit later, and I'll discuss that in my trimming video, but I'm going to leave about a half of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and start using those ribs that I showed you earlier. And my rib usage is going to allow me to push these ribs inside and create the beginning curve of my bowl. 
Now, not everybody throws with ribs, but ribs have a wonderful uh, opportunity to use a curve that's already set up. It's a much smoother curve than I can get with my fingers. So, what I'm really doing is creating the most important part of a ball for me, and that is the uninterrupted curve. And by that I mean if I start on this side and I watch as the ball goes down into the base and it comes right back up, it should be uninterrupted. It shouldn't be jagged, it should be nice and smooth. So to show this, I have already cut away a pot that I want to give you a picture of what that looks like. So here's my cutaway. And again, what I was talking about is I want to see that uninterrupted curve. And you can see how my rib fits that same groove that same angle from here. So now when, I, when I'm holding this rib and I'm pushing down, there's a lot of flex. So when I'm pushing this down, I want to push this hard enough so this flexes a little bit and it will apply pressure from the bottom against the wall. Now when I push down, I want to make sure that I'm holding it in that same area of about three to six o'clock. If I hold the rib at an angle over here towards nine o'clock, I'm going to get what's called chattering. Sometimes it's desired for us that rip's going to dig in and make a huge mess of the inside of our bowl. So one thing I didn't really get to talk too much about the cylinder is compressing the rim. And that's one thing that is going to really help me out in this bowl. So what I'm doing is this tends to get really thin. And with the bowl, that's going to be the area that's really going to bump into other things in the cabinet. It's, a, it's an opportunity for something to chip really easily. So how I can fix that and thicken this up is to hold between my pointer finger and my thumb on my left hand, and I create a little H that I can push down and compress that plate. These two fingers here prevent it from um, stretching out, and this clay right here compresses it down and flattens it. This can get rid of the occasional little bump in the lip as well. Now that I have the rim flattened, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling this much like a cylinder. There are two kind of approaches to throwing the bowl. You can start throwing it and pulling it at an angle, or what I'm going to do is throw it like a cylinder and then stretch it. I feel that that is the best way to do this because it's always easier to stretch something out than it is to try to bring something back in. And I'm sure that you're finding that out in your throwing. So, when I pull this, one thing I want to be aware of is where is my clay going to stretch the most when I'm pulling? Or when I'm stretching this out in the end in the bowl form. So I'm going to take the rim and eventually this is going to be stretched up to about here. So thinking about this, I want to leave the most amount of clay at the top and it's going to stretch the least at the bottom. So in this cutaway, and you can see it a little bit better right up here, there's I've actually started pulling this. So that curve is still established here at the bottom. And you can see there's plenty of clay down here at the bottom for me to remove a little bit later. And what I've started to do is thin this out. And I've left enough clay. I'm going to thin this out even more here, right here in the middle. And eventually, I'm going to remove this clay through my second process of trimming. So all of this clay right here, this will become stretched out, and you'll see a little bit more of that become a bowl as we get farther into the process. One of the reasons I really like throwing bowls is throwing cylinders and related both to each other is that I can really set up how wide my clay is here and predict how big my bowl is going to be. I need to leave plenty of clay down here at the bottom so that it supports this bowl as it gets farther out. If I have a really tiny base, the weight here in the shoulder and in the wall area is going to cause this thing to fall as it gets farther. So I want to leave plenty of clay here. I can always remove that later. So for this next part, I'm pretty much set with my height and where I've distributed my clay. I'm going to start stretching this out. Now this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. So I want you to pay close attention how I use the rib and which part of the rib I'm using and the wheel speed of which I'm traveling. You know, everything from here on out is going to be pretty slow, pretty focused. I know exactly what I'm doing so that nothing seems to be of a surprise as I get farther into this process. I'm going to start at 12 o'clock, and as I push against this rib, it's going to turn to 3 o'clock and stretch this out just like that. I'm going to start at the bottom 
and work my way to the top in this motion. So let's go ahead and do it. These three images are a quick snapshot of the ribs position as you're starting to shape that wall. You start at 12, moving slowly towards 3 o'clock, applying pressure from the bottom to the top with a slight outward motion. The space is a little tight inside, so if I can just brace my left hand against my right hand, I'm slowly stretching this out. When I get to the top, I hold it and I remove my rib. And you can see quite a bit of clay is gathering on my rib here. I'm going to clean that off, throw it back in my throwing bucket. I'm going to go back down to the bottom and push out a little bit. And I do this gradually because I don't want the clay to tear as I'm stretching it. If I push too hard, too fast, the clay will tear and kind of give away. What I'm really being careful of too is when I put pressure down, you're going to have to find this out for yourself, but the amount of pressure I'm putting down is enough to bend this rib about halfway. So I'm going to finish stretching this. I'm going to do this a couple more times. So starting on the inside, holding that rib at an angle, and slowly pushing this out. So I'm taking my left hand and kind of bracing it against the side so I don't stretch it too much. And as you can see, that bowl transforming from that cylinder into something that even resembles a bowl. So I start at the bottom, working my way to the top each time, and when I get to the top, I hold it there, and as you can see, this is starting to get much more rounded on the inside. Now on the outside, you do see a little bit of a ledge right here. I'm going to go back in and re-throw that really quickly just to make that a little bit more gradual. So this is a snapshot of that very, very close to the end bowl. I'm going to do a few more finishing touches, but this is pretty much it. If you look here up at the rim, there's a nice curve all the way down. And I've kept that pretty much the same thickness all the way throughout. Now, what you're going to see later on, after I finish this completely, is I'm going to take a trimming tool and I'm going to cut in here and remove some of this extra clay. I'm going to continue that curve here all the way up so that it's the same thickness all the way throughout. I'm also going to do what's called a foot ring where I'm going to remove some clay from the center. Remember where I left that half of an inch. And I'm going to remove this clay so that it sits basically on a little ring. just like this. You can see that exposed little foot right there. It's going to sit on that and make it nice and stable. And I'll explain that a little bit more in the trimming video. So let's make those final touches onto our bowl. So some of you might really like these um, rings and these throwing marks inside the bowl and on the outside, and you're more than welcome to leave them. Just to give you an option or to show you, this metal rib is a great one to clean everything up. So I start at the top. And I work my way down, and all I'm doing is pushing the clay out a little bit and scraping away those layers of slip to make sure this is nice and smooth. And we're going to do the same thing for the outside. And I love this metal rib because I can bend it right between my thumb, my pointer finger, and my pinky, and it gives like a perfect curve. This goes without saying, but very light pressure. So, that's pretty much my bowl right here. I have a little extra clay right down here at the bottom. I'm going to remove that in the next video. And I'm going to show you how to create a foot ring. But this bowl needs to be set aside until it's leather hard. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off the bat so it's not um, too difficult to remove it when I'm ready to start trimming it. But I'm basically going to invert it 
and remove the clay that's at the bottom. And that's how I'm going to trim this. So, thanks for coming along for the ride and as we talked about throwing a bowl. I hope this is really helpful and opens up a little bit of the possibilities of what you can do with the wheel. All right, thank you so much and happy throwing.